There is an interesting episode in Ramayana where Mother Sita was smitten by the sight of a golden deer and she wanted that deer. They were in a forest infested with demons and wild animals. Rama, Lakshmana and Sita were there together for 14 years on exile. And Rama told Sita that it is not good for me to leave you unattended because this forest is full of demons who can change their forms and shapes and you would not know who is a demon who is not. Here, Mother Sita insisted and she would not give in or give up until Lord Rama would leave and get her the golden deer. Then Lord Rama said, fine, I will go get you the deer. But Lakshmana will be there for your protection, for your safety. And he told Lakshmana, make sure Sita is protected at all times. Never leave her sight. So Lord Rama goes hunting for this deer. And this deer was nothing but a Rakshasa, a demon sent by Ravana, who was the biggest of all demons, the most powerful of all demons on the planet Earth. And no god or demigod could uh, face him or to win over him. And uh, Ravana had sent one of his choicest uh, charlatan demon who could change form at will in the form of a very attractive golden deer. In the process of Lord Rama capturing this demon in the shape of a golden deer, the golden deer pretended to be Rama and gave out cries, false cries, that as if Lord Rama is in danger. Ha Sita, ha Lakshmana, please, you know, help me type thing. So Mother Sita is listening to the cries of Rama and insists that Lakshmana should leave sight of Sita and go protect Rama. Lakshmana is saying, Lord Rama doesn't need protection. <laughs> the one who protects others does not need any protection. And I am here to protect you because I'm following Lord Rama. Atma Rama. So Lakshmana insisted, I will not leave. So Mother Sita started talking all kinds of gibberish nonsense. I mean, it's very hard to even talk <laughs> to relate those things which are actually in Ramayana. You can read it. Including, oh, you actually want Rama to be dead so then you can uh, marry me. All kinds of nonsense. And Lakshmana could not take it anymore. And he says, fine. But under one condition, that is the story of Lakshman Rekha. He drew a line on the ground. We call it a circle of golden light, right? Around her area. She said, do not, Lakshmana said, do not come outside of this line. Don't go beyond this line. I would say a circle of light because it's a protection all around 360 degrees. As long as you stay in that, no one can harm you because no one can enter you. If they enter it, they will be finished. And Lakshmana goes in search of Rama. In the meantime, which was the original intent of Ravana, that this story will go this far. The moment it goes this far, then Ravana would camouflage uh, or come pretending to be a, a sadhu, a saint, a mendicant. So Ravana usne bhej badal ke aagaya, Sita ke paas. And he asked for arms, bhiksha. Those times no one was turned away. They would give some sort of bhiksha. And Mother Sita said, I have nothing with me to give you. Right? And uh, of course, Ravana insisted. Again, the word here is insisted. Mother Sita insisted before. And now, Ravana insisted. No. I must get some arms. She said, okay, uh, I'll give you something. And he said, then you must come outside to give me arms. I cannot come inside because I cannot enter. You are a lone woman. How can I come into your house? 
what will people say? What kind of guilt trip he gave to her. All in the name of dharma, right conduct, things like that. Propriety, what is right thing to do. In the moment Mother Sita came out of the golden circle of light, let's call it Lakshman Rekha, now she was completely vulnerable. There was no protection. And Ravana was looking for that opportunity, swooped Sita, took it in his Vimana, his um, flying vehicle, and off he went. The rest of the story follows that uh, there was a war after that, and the Ravana was killed. What is the purpose of the story? Allegedly, before Mother Sita went into exile and all of that stuff, she deposited herself, her true self, in fire. So the Sita that was there for 14 years with Rama was Maya. Maya is illusory, <laughs> unreal, <laughs> human, <laughs> not divine. So the drama of Rama for 14 years was not based on the real Sita. It was Maya v Sita. So all the nonsense that Sita was talking about, oh, I want this deer which represented a desire. And giving all kind of guilt trip to Rama, her husband, to her brother-in-law, Lakshmana. So much so they go like, okay, okay, I'll give you what you want. Just shut up already. <laughs> and it happens in all households. Our mothers, our sisters, our siblings, it can be brothers also, it's not always ladies, by the way. It can be anybody, your children, your sons, your daughters, and your in-laws, and friends even, close friends, and bosses, and subordinates, and take any relationship. But mostly very close-knit. People don't know sometimes what they are talking about. People don't know that what they are asking for is not good for them. They want what they want, how they want, when they want. They want it now. They want it from you. They want it this particular way. Petulant child. Ziddi bacha. And wo ziddi bacha. Tumhari maa hai, tumhara baap hai, tumhara bhai hai, bhen hai, tumhara gharwala, gharwali hai, bacha hai, kuch bhi ho. Ziddi bacha. Wo ziddi bacha tum bhi ho sakte ho. Haan. <laughs> That Zindi Bacha is really me, okay? But we have to look at it from both external and internal. We are childish in many ways and so are other people. And giving into that childishness is useless, harmful for the person, for you, for the relationship and for the clan the family overall. The repercussions can be really far-reaching. So when we give in to the petulance of a certain behavior of a certain person, we think we are supporting them, that I'm doing this sacrifice for your sake. So the sacrifice that I'm making, in this case, the sacrifice that Rama made, the sacrifice that Lakshmana made, was neither good for Sita, right? It actually led to the abduction of Sita, which led to the suffering that Sita went through, which led to the war. All of that could have been avoided. It's like you have to, and I am a student in this, a child in this. I'm not preaching. This is some lesson that I am sharing with you that I have yet to practice. I want to be very clear about that. But this is just like a clarity I received I'm sharing with you. Because I have made sacrifices for my loved ones where I did not benefit anything from it. My loved ones have not benefited from it. No one benefited from it. It was a lossy situation all around. Whatever sacrifices I made for the sake of loved one giving into the petulance of that person. And that petulant person can be your mother, father also. Petulance is ziddh jo hoti hai na, wo kisi ki bhi ho sakti hai. Ye nahi hai ki bacche ki ziddh hai. And whatever I am sacrificing for the sake of the other person, the other person says, you hurt me through your actions, which was my sacrifice. 
You wanted to do that to hurt me, to make me look bad, to expose my badness, to make me look bad. I mean, so you see the point. The conclusion, the bottom line, the lesson really is that you stay firm, wedded to your own principles, to your own goals, be married to your own values and priorities, and not be swayed by what other people say. Because we judge other people by what they say. And a lot of times, people don't know what they're saying. They actually don't know. Or they know what they're saying, but they don't mean it. So you can say, well, you said it. Well, says, yeah, I didn't mean it. <laughs> then, then how do I know? When you mean when you, what you say and when you don't mean what you say, how do I turn that switch on and off? So perhaps what is needed in this situation, the simplest solution is a hug. <laughs> hug that person, hug yourself, love and accept that person unconditionally. Love yourself, accept yourself unconditionally. God bless everyone, however, whoever, wherever they are. I love me.